What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. I am super excited to bring you guys along for this weekend of racing. Me and the team are out of Swamp Classic. I have mentioned this race in the channel before. It's a stage race where I'll be competing in the category three field. Now I'll be doing a road race at 12.45 p.m. Saturday, followed by a time trial a bit later the same afternoon and a crit on Sunday. And then we'll see how we stack up on the overall. Last year I competed as a category five and I won the road race and the time trial and finished fourth on the crit, which was enough for me to take the overall. It's gonna be a lot harder this year in the category threes for sure. Some of us drove up late last night and it took us around five hours or so because of the really, really bad traffic. Some of the team was out racing early this morning at like 8 a.m. and we got a few podiums in different categories, which is definitely a great way to start the weekend for the team. I'm glad my race is later on the day because it was way too cold for a Florida boy. It was like 42 degrees. Before heading out to the venue, we went out and had some breakfast at this super nice local place. It was delicious. The boys finished up some bike maintenance they had to get done, and now we're all in race mode and ready to go. We're staying at this super nice Airbnb, and I'll show you guys a few clip, a clips of it, man. It's just beautiful out here. All right, guys, so let's jump straight into the road race. I'm sure that's what you guys are here for. This is the fun part anyways. And I'm sure you guys heard Andre back there uh, before the start of the race. He was just giving me some words of encouragement. Um, he was just saying like, come on, you got this, you can do it. And to me, to some people that could be meaningless, but to me, it is so important and so motivating when you have people in your corner that believe in you, that trust you, that know that you can get it done. And not only Andre, but that's also Colin, which is the one teammate I have in this uh, in this race, which you'll see him right here in front of me. He was one of the keys why I was able to win this race solo and you'll see that in a bit the first few laps were just attack after attack but nothing really threatening it was just a solo rider sometimes two riders my plan was just to stay towards the front and not only because it's safer up there but also because if something threatening did go off the road then i was uh i was able to uh respond to it but also i was super smart and did a great job of measuring my efforts when there was a, a rider would attack i wouldn't close the gap immediately i would just let a few riders come past me and let them do the work to close the gap and i would just stay on their wheels and i was just very very calm which is um which is something very very positive after the second lap, I knew I wanted to attack and the only place hard enough to do it uh, to actually make a difference was with around 3k to go going into the last lap which meant that if nobody followed I was gonna have to spend around 14 miles solo trying to stay away from the peloton which wasn't gonna be easy at all I once heard this quote though that said something like uh, to win you have to risk losing or something like that I don't remember exactly but I'm sure you guys get the point well I knew that um, I was going to have to go full gas as hard as I could to keep the pack from catching me, which could mean two things. I, I could either blow up and pretty much throw away my race, um, or even if I didn't blow up, but they did call me because I just went full gas, I wasn't just going to have enough. I was going to be exhausted. So my race was probably going to be over anyways. And not only my race, but most likely my GC hopes. I trusted my gut feeling and talk calling. I was going to go in the kicker going into the last lap, no matter what happened. Let's see what uh let's see how that actually ends up uh working out. You not a breakaway guy? Huh? The breakaway guy or a sprinter? I don't know what I am. <laughs> There's a bike rider. <laughs> yeah, I All right, I'm sure you guys heard that uh, little conversation there with the Bello Blue rider to my left. He was asking me if uh, if I'm not a breakaway rider or if I'm a sprinter, like what kind of rider I am. And I just said, ah, I'm just a bike rider, man. I, I don't know what you're talking about. And then he just said, all right, yeah, sure. Um, so there was two guys off the road and I don't know if they did that on purpose because as soon as he was kind of blocking me in, talking to me, his teammate attacked and now is trying to breach the gap over to the other two riders that are in front. And those two riders are actually messing up my plan because I wanted to go on the kicker and I didn't want anybody else to be off the road. Uh, so when I attacked, uh, they either followed me, I didn't have to worry about catching anybody else and then just 
you know, getting them to sit on my wheel and not do any work. Or actually, I honestly just wanted to go solo. I didn't want to have to deal with um, other riders not being whether like as strong as me or wanting to put as much effort as me. And I just wanted to go solo. So. I immediately told Colin like, hey, you need to bring them back. Like I, I didn't even say it. I just looked at him and pointed forward and he just comes to the front right here and he's drilling the pace. We're going almost 30 miles an hour. I mean, we're literally going 30 miles an hour actually. And I'm just sitting on his wheel and this is perfect. But uh, the only thing I would have, uh, I mean, it's hard to say right now because I did win the race. So, uh, but if I didn't, actually have won the race the only thing i would have done differently was and i actually told them i don't know if you could hear on the video uh, we're still a little bit far from the place where i want to attack so i actually tell him uh to you know steady like and by that i meant don't bring him back yet uh leave them out there as we're getting closer to the place where i want to attack that's where i want you to finally bring them back and this is exactly why right here and i told i don't know why but i told this this bellow brew guy was going to attack right here which kind of messes up my plan i didn't want to attack on the flat we're still going like 24 25 miles an hour i wanted to attack in a place where the race would actually be hard for people to follow me not here i didn't want to waste energy uh, on the flats here and honestly i don't know why this bellow bro guy didn't go i saw him move towards the front that right hand side was open i thought he was going to jump i don't know why he just uh started messing with his water bottles and and just didn't jump but um i also thought when he came and talked to me he was kind of um when i kind of signaled to colin to bring them back i figured he also know that I wanted to attack on this uh, coming up to the hill, which is where you can see the, the cop car right towards the front up there. So when he brought him back, we were still a bit far from where I wanted to attack uh, because the hill kind of starts here. Uh, so you can see our speed is down to like 90 miles an hour. That's because the hill kind of starts here, but it's very gradual. It might be like one, two percent. So it's not hard enough to actually make a difference. And because they brought him back so quick, now I'm boxed in. So I, I like you cannot cross the yellow line. So if uh, we have a uh, uh, we have a guy on a uh, motorcycle, not a, I don't know what the word is, not a referee, but uh, he's on the motorcycle, and if he sees you attack or pass a rider on the double yellow or on the yellow line then uh he'll just send you back to the pack so you cannot attack there but you can see right here this is where i wanted 2k to go to the line but 2k to go with one lap to go which is uh around a 13 mile lap so right here i'm still standing and putting down a lot of power i look back nobody's on my wheel and guys guys this was such a hard effort i pr pretty much everything from my two minute all the way to like my 30 minute which is how long this last lap took the last lap was about 35 minutes or so and that's how long it took me and i pr everything except my five minute power and i was only a few watts off of it i think for the first like three minutes uh, to get to to initially establish the gap i did like five and a half watts per kilo for uh, like three and a half minutes or three minutes and 40 seconds or something like that and then um i knew it was going to be hard to hold the group through this um going over the line through the flat uh spots and if i did hold them until we got to the back of the course where it was actually more like undulating hills i knew back there it was going to be hard for them to catch me but here um there's another uh steep little kicker coming up so i'm trying to stay in that sweet spot zone kind of save a little bit of energy um so i can go hard on the hill again because you're not really going to make that much of a difference on the flat but as soon as the road starts to go uphill as you can see right here um that's where you're really going to make a difference you can see i'm pushing on again uh like 360 uh over 400 and i'm passing riders here this right here is uh from i don't know if it's lapped from our race or he's from a race that started before us so you can see i saved a little bit of energy through the flat and now i'm trying to stay around those high 300s uh close to 400 just so i can establish the gap and honestly i'll show you guys a picture when i went over the line the gap was not very big at all um I, I was hoping to have a bigger gap than I did. And then now here, uh, it actually starts going downhill and we'll go towards the line. And I'll show you guys a few pictures of it because the gap was not very big. And there was a few, there was a few times where I thought they were for sure gonna catch me. And you'll see the whole time I'm pushing over 300 watts, guys. Like I said, for this last uh, 35 minutes or so that it took for me to win the race solo. Um, and I did put about a 55 minute gap into the field. So I would say the last like five minutes or so, I kind of 
because I knew I had to do a time trial later in the afternoon, like uh, two hours after this or so, I kind of held back a little bit because I already had such a big gap. I, I couldn't even see the group through the corners anymore. And so right now we're going over, uh, we're about to go over start finish line. And I'll show you guys some pictures on the screen. The gap was not very big. They were still chasing really hard, but I knew that if I could hold them through these flat areas, I was gonna definitely be able to grow my gap on the back on the undulating part. So. Uh, yeah, I put the pictures here on the screen so you guys can see. And like I said, guys, it this chase, uh, or not this chase, but this breakaway took around 35 minutes or so. And for that time, I think I averaged like 4.3 watts per kilo or something like that. Um, so definitely, I was definitely feeling great. I definitely put, uh, like I said, I PR every power, um, no, every power number from uh, two minutes all the way to like 30 minutes which is how long this lasted except for my five minutes but i was also very very close to it we're so far away Woo! waldo there you go boys good job Let's go, baby. Go hard or go home. I had to get that TT done in the afternoon. I don't know if I have the legs for it, but we're going to send it. A clear win. No, it's not Milligan. Number 63, Andre Silva. Let's go! All right, boys, it is time to go and uh, smash this TT and see how it goes. I don't know if I got another effort in the legs after that road race, but I'm going to give it everything. It's a little bit chilly, but, um, you know, still feeling good. See how it goes. I'm Dennis. Five, four, three, two, one. Steven? Go. All right, guys, so a few hours later, I think about between two and a half and three hours later, I'm out for my time trial. This TT went as smoothly as it could have gone. This is a 20K TT. I'll put the uh, ride on the screen so you guys can see it. And like I always say, if you guys want to check out the entire ride, my entire training, all of that stuff, you can go and check me out on Strava. I have everything public. I do not hide power. I do not um, hide anything. But this TT went as smoothly as it could have gone. I definitely went as hard as I that's everything I had on the legs left after the big road race. And I feel that I could have done a better job between the road race and the TT of actually staying hydrated and eating something, getting something in me as soon as I finished the road race, which I didn't do because I had to go to the podium and all that. And this right here was the only, uh, yeah, I got pretty pissed at that because uh, there is a cop there who's a police guy who's supposed to stop the cars and let the riders go whether they're going this way or the opposite way during the TT and the road race and he said he tells a car to go I don't know if he didn't realize that I was coming but um, I pretty much had to hit the brakes there and lose a lot of speed uh, and going up a hill that definitely makes a difference now whatever I'm not gonna complain too much about it because I did end up winning the time trial and it wasn't by a second or two so it didn't make a difference at the end of the day now as I was saying before I could have definitely done a better job of uh, nutrition and hydration between the road race and the time trial and it's definitely something that I will be doing uh, next time now uh, I don't know if you guys know who Will is Will Harden he race uh, well he's racing for miami knights now he's gonna start this year uh last year i think he was racing for project echelon and he's uh he's been in a couple of uh norcal cycling videos now the reason why i'm bringing this up is because he was here doing doing this race i actually didn't get to say hi to him he, he also runs a youtube channel i didn't get to say hi to him because i was busy doing my own thing but he actually ended up smashing this tt i don't know if he was on a tt bike or if he was on a road bike but i mean regardless i mean if it was on a road bike that was super impressive because he actually ended up taking the kom for the course and this course has uh, has been um the same for years and he took the kom for it so that was very very impressive i think he averaged like almost uh like 355 watts or 360 watts for like uh, i don't know 19 minutes or something which is the fastest time ever done at this tt course so i would i want to say he was on a on a TT bike, but I am not sure. So 
uh, definitely kudos to him. He definitely smashed it. I uh, think I did like a 22-13. So he was like three minutes faster than me, which is very, very impressive. You see how high the level is. Uh, so the, like I said, the TT went pretty smoothly. I did end up winning the time trial. So this had me uh, sitting first on the GC going into the crit tomorrow. And like I said, I did make a few mistakes with nutrition and I definitely gave it everything I had um on the day after the massive effort to win the road race so i was very very happy with this um with this time trial with this effort i did pass a lot of guys that started a little bit ahead of me and like i said i was i was happy with the effort all right guys so back at the airbnb now the boys are out there playing pool i'm freaking exhausted we had dinner i'm ready to just go to bed today was incredible the team the team did incredible we got like four or five podiums but um i won the road race as you guys already saw from a solo breakaway i spent the last lap the entire last lap solo um that was like 30 minutes by myself that was amazing and then i gave it everything i had on the time trial and i didn't know until now but the results just got posted um i actually won the time trial as well so um i'm sitting first on the omnium so tomorrow i just gotta have a nice crit finish it and i should be able to take the overall home um it's gonna be raining tomorrow, so it's it's gonna suck. It's gonna be crazy, but um, yeah, ready to give it everything tomorrow. I'm gonna just go to bed. I'm <laughs> I'm freaking exhausted, man. But today was amazing, so I catch you guys tomorrow. All right, guys, so it was all fun and games back at the Airbnb, but now it's time to race. I am glad that my race was at 2.30 p.m. because the entire morning was uh, just raining and it was like around 42 degrees, which was terrible to race on. So coming into the race, my number one goal, of course, was the GC and winning the race was kind of like second thought. Um, so we had three points premiums, which gives you uh, five, three, and one points towards the GC. So my idea was to try and go for the points premiums to consolidate the GC and hope to have something extra on the legs for a solo attack with, I don't know, around five laps to go or so. I ended up getting some points on most of the premiums when guys weren't up the road, so I knew the GC uh, was kind of mine by then. With around five laps to go, um, a group goes off the road, which looking back at it, it was my fault for not jumping on it. I was right behind the rider that won the race uh, from a group of three, but I didn't jump and I just let him go, which is this guy in yellow right here. With three laps to go, I decided to send a flyer and nobody was able to follow. Um, so I ended up solo between the peloton and the breakaway. I pushed to try and breach to them and honestly, uh, I wasn't able to, but I was feeling really, really strong. I just ran out of time. I needed a few more laps and I believe I would have been able to catch them. My power was still really, really good. I ended up coming over the line solo for fourth place and with that secured the GC for the second year in a row. Last year as a category five and this year as a cat three. And the team did incredible as well, not just me. Uh, we got a lot of podiums, wins, very successful weekend of racing to say the least. And if you guys enjoyed the video, a like and a subscribe is very, very appreciated. This is by far the most time I have spent editing and recording a video, but I am very, very proud of um, how it came out and I hope that you guys really, really enjoy it. But uh, with that out of the way, I'll catch you guys on the next one.